10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Trinity test, the first detonation of a nuclear weapon, was conducted at 5.29 a.m. on July 16, 1945, at the Alamogordo Bombing and Gunnery Range in New Mexico. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory during World War II, is often credited as the father of the atomic bomb for his role in the Manhattan Project, which was the secret development of atomic weapons. He later recalled what he felt after seeing the successful detonation. We knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed. A few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. That film clip is from the 1965 documentary, The Decision to Drop the Bomb. Is that truly how Oppenheimer felt at the time of the Trinity test? There are many others who were present during the test who can speak to Oppenheimer's reactions to the successful detonation of the atomic bomb. I am not saying these recollections are accurate in themselves or more accurate than Oppenheimer's, but they do present a different picture than the one given by Oppenheimer himself in the famous clip. In a 1948 Time article, Brigadier General Thomas F. Farrell, Deputy Commanding General and Chief of Field Operations of the Manhattan Project, was quoted about how Oppenheimer reacted when the test happened. He grew tenser as the last seconds ticked off. He scarcely breathed. He held onto a post to steady himself. When the announcer shouted, Now! And then there came this tremendous burst of light followed by the deep, growling roar of the explosion. His face relaxed into an expression of tremendous relief. Leslie Groves, the director of the Manhattan Project, published a book in 1962 titled Now It Can Be Told, The Story of the Manhattan Project, about his experiences during the development of the atomic bomb. He recalled that after the successful test, I had also counted on having a discussion with Oppenheimer on some other important points. These plans prove utterly impractical, for no one who had witnessed the test was in a frame of mind to discuss anything. The reaction to success was simply too great. It was not only that we had achieved success with the bomb, but that everyone, scientists, military officers, engineers, realized that we had been personal participants and eyewitnesses to a major milestone in the world's history and had a sombering appreciation of what the results of our work would be. Groves continued on. Shortly after the explosion, Farrell and Oppenheimer returned by Jeep to the base camp with a number of the others who had been at the dugout. When Farrell came up to me, his first words were, the war is over. My reply was, yes, after we dropped two bombs on Japan. I congratulated Oppenheimer quietly with an, I'm proud of all of you. And he replied with a simple, thank you. We were both, I'm sure, already thinking of the future and whether we could repeat our success soon and bring the war to an end. Isidore Isaac Robbie was an American physicist who worked as a consultant on the Manhattan Project. He was present at the Trinity test. In a documentary from 1980 titled The Day After Trinity, Robbie recalled, He was in the, uh, in the forward bunker and then when he came back, there he was, you know, with his hat. You've seen pictures of that Robert's hat and so on. And uh, he came to where we were in the, in the headquarters, so to speak. And um, the way his walk was like high noon. 
I think it's the best I could describe it. This kind of struck. He'd done it. The Lazard Petition, headed by Leo Lazard, the inventor of the nuclear chain reaction, was signed by numerous scientists working on the Manhattan Project. It asked President Harry S. Truman to inform Japan of the terms of surrender demanded by the Allies and allow Japan to either accept or refuse these terms before America used atomic weapons. The letter never made it to Truman. As we know, the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki went ahead. Oppenheimer did not sign this letter and discouraged its circulation at Los Alamos. Oppenheimer's reluctance about the circulation of the petition or his lack of signing it does not really point us towards his feelings about it at the time. His disinterest may have been just because of his focus on trying to complete the atomic bomb and not wanting to focus on anything else. Oppenheimer could have added his name to the petition or allowed circulation, but he did not. In the same article from Time Magazine quoted earlier, Oppenheimer is quoted about his thoughts in the immediate aftermath of the test. Oppenheimer recalls that two lines of the Bhagavad Gita flash through his mind. I am become death, the shatterer of worlds. This article shows that Oppenheimer had at least thought of the words from the Bhagavad Gita in relation to the Trinity test in 1948. It does not either prove nor disprove that he was thinking those exact lines during the Trinity test in July 1945. I am not claiming that Oppenheimer did not think these often quoted words at the time of the test. I'm merely stating that the written record only shows this occurring in 1948, but of course we cannot know what took place inside his mind that day in New Mexico. However, what I am saying is that the scene after the Trinity test was not presented by others as a solemn event full of nervous energy as described by Oppenheimer in the famous clip. They described celebrations, feelings of relief, and accomplishment for what they had done with the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer clearly came to regret what he did with the Manhattan Project. His work in nuclear non-proliferation is just one example. But the recollections of others present the scene of the Trinity test as quite different than what Oppenheimer had said when he thought he had become the destroyer of worlds.